In a world. In a world. In a world where tomorrow's blockbusters reign and yesterday's classics are forgotten, three women intend to remember. Hey everyone, welcome to Millennials at the Movie House, the podcast where three friends watch older movies and review them from our modern, everyday perspective. I'm Betsy. I'm Tracy. And I'm Serena. And today we are talking about The Most Dangerous Game. It was a 1932 pre-code film, screenplay by James Ashmore Creelman, based on the short story by Richard Connell, directed by Irving Pitchell and Ernest Schnauzak. Schnauzak? Schnauzak? Okay. (laughs) Starring Joel McCree, Faye Ray, Leslie Banks, and Robert Armstrong. Quick synopsis, Serena, go! Oh, oh no! I really thought I she was, was going to go for not, me. I really thought I, she was I, was, for me. I thought so too. Um, dang! I'm literally like writing down like, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it, so I won't say it. But I'm writing down stuff as you just said pre-code. I'm like, oh, that explains a lot. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. 1932. Is this like a set in 1932 as well? Um, short story so? was written in 1924. So yeah, yeah, late 20s, early 30s. So um, enter a ship scene, if you will, with a bunch of gentlemen on a ship. Titanic vibes ensue. Um, the Everyone dies. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Everyone dies except for the Hawkeye, the main. And uh, he washes up on an island and goes and knocks on the only house that he can find. Very creepy house, by the way, may I add. And Very creepy knocker, too. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, I, that was the opening scene of the movie. I, I already Great. Knew I was, we'll talk I was, about it. Great scene. Yeah, but yeah I agree. Uh, okay, so he wa- doesn't know what he's walking into. He walks into his house of basically seemingly kind of normal. And then all of a sudden things go awry. This guy that's like the that lives there is basically, well, we're not quite sure what's wrong with him, but something's wrong with him. He <laughs> is a hunter, quote unquote, and it turns out he's actually... Um, sets this whole thing up everyone's set up he puts the buoys so that the ship crashed on purpose so he can get all these people over there so he can literally get them drunk slash we don't know what else and they go out sends them out and gives them a head start and starts hunting them he makes a point of saying that they are 100 percent sober when he sends them out yep oh you know what i heard that too and i wasn't sure if he was lying but the fact that he was waiting for martin to sober up kind of makes sense yep he, 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 gives a, he gives them a head start. He gives them a weapon. He gives mm-hmm. them like a time period, time frame. Yeah, like a four four hour time frame or something. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it's like a game to him basically. And mm-hmm. um, this this character Bob, he uh, Joel McRae, right? McRae. Mm-hmm. He uh, he in the movie he is the hunter. Um, he's a professional, you know, tiger hunter. And basically, I think that I think that the guy set it all up. Um, Zaroff, I think he set the whole thing up because he's like a f- well renowned, like famous hunter. And so he was like a anyway, fan. He was like a fan of yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then he basically this big hunt scene he has like sends like the dogs after them and Oh yeah, there's a girl in there too, of course, like a damsel <laughs> in distress. <laughs> mm-hmm. A female, one sole female um, in the entire movie. So they go out and they're running around the island, whatever, and he tries to play tricks with this guy. Uh, lo and behold, after a long hunt, um, he ends up beating him. But we don't know that because the end is like a twist where he jumps into the water and the guy thinks he's dead, but he's actually not. And uh, yeah, and then they, he comes back, they have a big fight, and uh, then him and the damsel sail off into the sunset on a ship together happily ever after. Good job. Good job. Yeah. That officially <laughs> has more words than the actual movie. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Except for that one scene. Yeah. The opening scene. All talking the opening for like scene. 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um, so... From that. that being said, good job, Serena. What did everybody think? It was, um, it was interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, let me, can I just start this off with the reason I'm, I'm directing this whole thing. Oh, yeah, it's, that's my, right. it's my birthday. Happy birthday. My, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's my birthday pick. Um, yeah. Why and... did you, why did you pick this one? <laughs> well, I tried to pick several other, other movies and I could not find them anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. No, nowhere streaming, nothing. There, there were like three other movies that I tried to, to get. 
Um, this is the fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, well, instead of picking movie then trying to find it, I found a source and went to the movies and picked it from there. And I just started looking at movies and their description, and this caught my eye. Um, mostly because, Bets, you remember a couple of months ago, we watched The Hunt? Oh, I have oh. so many notes on The Hunt right Yeah, now. there was, and <laughs> it's come to find out, obviously, because all movies that we picked are based on, like, a story of some sort. Yep. This was based on a short story, and it's one of the most adapted short stories ever. I, thought I that have that in my why... notes. I thought that's why you picked it because I definitely had to read this in high school and I kind of thought that you were like sneaking in a millennial non-millennial movie because <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone had to read this. No, movie in high I didn't. No. Oh, okay. No, I, I didn't either. So. I did notice that I noticed that in the um like trivia section or whatever. I noticed that it was yeah. one of the most anthologized stories of all time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think yeah. that's like not by the way word of the day vocab word um i was thinking yeah i'm sure a million movies and shows have been spun off this i can name like a bunch in my head there's a least. wikipedia page just for spin-offs of the most dangerous game yeah. Yeah. oh my god is there i'll have to yeah, look that up adaptations that. Mm-hmm. um yeah just look like, yeah i think it's just now become a classic story that trope almost tell. yeah it's its yeah. own type yep. of genre almost oh yeah yep. no all I, I based off of this too. one short story this one concept yeah and I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that more later on i'm sure but yeah i have some comments i i have some comments about the hunt specifically yeah. because um, yeah. yeah then all we right. won't be talking about the same thing betsy because i never saw the hunt and i have lots to say about other things so okay. you should <sighs> i liked the hunt so did i anyway um yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about that. But um, Tracy, how'd you like it? I I liked it. Um, I have some comments that we'll get into. Um, well, let's go. Let's go into top of the marquee. What was your favorite part? Okay. Because I think my favorite part was was the concept. I I yeah. this this is one of yeah. those ideas that I think gets into humanity's head. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yep. And it and is then put into all other types of media. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's I one of agree. those, I think, also morality questions mm-hmm. because this was, you know, kind of a spinoff because I was a little bit nervous because they were ta- they were big game hunters, and that is very faux pas. Now, obviously, it's yeah. you know yeah. all endangered species and whatever, but I. But think it wasn't back then. It wasn't no, yeah. especially yeah. in the twenties and thirties, like rich, especially they. I read this thing where especially rich Americans. Yeah, safaris, and that was the thing to do. That was the thing to do, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, and, and I, I mentioned this before we started, but I watched this with my mom, and she was like, wow, this is really ahead of its time. At, yeah. You know, it wasn't until decades later that this was kind of, you know, brought into question. I, and, yeah. I thought that same thing. I was, like, going through, like, all of the movies and shows that it made me think of, but, like, the whole plot line in general, the story behind it kind of was, like, wow, you almost forget for a second that this was 1932. And mm-hmm. then there's some scenes that you remember. Okay, this is an old one. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and I think, which one, is, what, you said it was a pre-code movie. What year did uh, quote unquote codes go into effect? I'm just curious. 1934. Oh, okay. Yeah, so oh, two right. years later. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought, Serena, I think this is one of the quotes that you have, but this is like obviously the first one I picked up. And I think it just really stitched everything together it was at the beginning and kind of put us on the place of what we were expecting and it was i think it was the doc okay let's hold on let's let's roll back before i knew exactly what was who was going to survive and what was going to happen here we are again on a, a yacht with rich people who mm-hmm. bring along their doctor like yeah. yep <laughs> like this is this is overboard this yeah. is um over uh, we watched like two or three other movies that are just like this like cat people had that the rich doctor yep. uh cat anyway. people's in here <laughs> um i would like to comment that i am very impressed that we are talking about the Hayes code knowing exactly what the Hayes code is and i feel like because i i when when did we first mention it it was like our one of our first episodes that we were talking about it wasn't yeah it? um i almost no it was i bet it was monahari because didn't they yes. edit it yeah. Yes, that's what it was. So in 1934, it was put into um, action, and it was a 
it was censoring basically of movies where the films had to kind of abide by these codes. It was, it was like a lot of like, um, I don't know, like, you know, alcohol and sex and drugs and blah, blah, blah. All those things kind of had to be checked in movies. So mm -hmm. back to the Dane most dangerous game. Um, the quote that I think sets the whole movie up is when the doctor of this yacht says, um, the beast of the jungle is killing just for his existence is called savage. The man killing just for sport is called civilized. Yes. And I think so, that goes back to what you were saying about how that was, this was ahead of its time where it very much on, you know, right there says what we're doing is wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like why, why are we killing these things just for fun? And why is that right? But we think it's so savage when somebody tries to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. It, it preludes, it sets up the movie. And at first, when the opening scene, I was like, oh, is this going to be one of those, like, whatever movies that I'm, like, not going to really be interested in? And then, like, as soon as the men were talking, it started. When I sent it, you guys saw me, the whole process of the first 12 minutes of the movie, where you get the opening scene, you have the guys talking about scotch being, you know, something for the nerves. And then that quote, and it, I actually, I have that quote, Tracy, but I have it, like, the whole, like, the longer version, because it's, he says, I was, I, I was thinking about the inconsistency of civilization. And mm -hmm. that's that whole a conversation, really. Yeah, that whole conversation really. That whole conversation. I mean, scene. I have three quotes from that, that whole scene. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it did a good job. Anyway, okay. So that was my favorite part was just the concept, the philosophy of it. Yeah. That the, was, story, okay. the story. The story itself, because that, it was, that was novelty at that point. That was different yeah. and new. And, yeah. Obviously, it's not now, but um, uh, yeah. One so, might say one might say they came for Joel McRae and stayed for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, wasn't that his? It was somebody's breakout role. Oh, I think it was Leslie Banks's. Never mind. Yeah, I was gonna say I think it's, it was Leslie Banks' first role. He was scary. <laughs> he was scary. He was effective. He yeah. was, and he had that little tick with the his scar. Yeah. Ooh, oh yeah. Love that little you touch. You could tell he came from theater. Like yes. you could feel that in his performance. Yeah. My favorite part was, was the scenery, was the sets, especially in the jungle, because yeah. there's a lot of jungle, a jungle action and they're doing a lot of running. So every shot was a different set. And I was so impressed by that or, or, you know, different area, different location, whatever. Um, I was just so impressed at the, um, the variety that they had yep. in those setups. Well, was, I mean, you probably was, know this, but if you didn't recognize Faye Ray yeah. from King Kong, yeah. all yeah. of these sets were King Kong. Right. And they were they both were shot at the same, at the time. same Which, time. I didn't realize, are, you, are we sure, like, is this a fact thing that the scenes were, the sets were King Kong? Yep. Yes. Because Robert Armstrong was also in King Kong. I just, yes. That was, was the way of the studio system, is they just, they have people. Recycled. And, they just, yep. yeah, it's the same people. It's recycled not like, actors, and, recycled sets. <laughs> yeah, it was well because one of this the 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 gateway of this of this and King Kong was also in Gone with the Wind, and they burned it down and Gone with the Wind. So it was all it's all nice oh. and neatly connected. Serena, what was your favorite part? Um, well, you guys both pretty much um, touched on it, but my um, my favorite scene I guess quote unquote was that chasing hunting that big final hunting scene and for the same reason that you had bets I mean it was like an epic hike even in black and white you get the tropical island vibes and yeah. that I loved that mm -hmm. um, and that and then, one shot where they're when they're on the log over the chasm that one yeah that one shot I was like oh yeah yes that moment mm -hmm. was really good it, it was like Lion King -esque, <laughs> but I I liked it, um, uh, and then my I put in for my favorite character was the lead, um, Joel McRae. He was great. I liked him. <laughs> you like your pretty boys. <laughs> I do. He had great cheekbones. <laughs> and after and after we discuss our wheel of questions, I will tell you who he made me think of. And well, we'll I think we all. I think, yeah, that's I think we're, we're ready right to jump next. in so there. Wheel of questions was spun to recast. So we are recasting, which I think is so funny because, I mean, like we were saying, this has been done uh, even recently as of recent as of 2020. So right. yeah, you're right. I so just want to say at the very beginning, um, instead of 
saying cast, it said the players. Yes, I because like that. we were still coming out of, it used to be, you know, it was based on theater structure. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep. Anyway, so who um, are our players? So, all right, so for this question and when we fixed it, I feel like mm -hmm. it's hard because like you said, it's been remade so many times that I, we don't mm -hmm. need to answer these questions. You can do, put literally anybody in these roles. Yeah. <laughs> like yep. literally anybody in these roles. Because, yeah. yeah, like you're looking, you know, you you have all the options in the world. I kind of rethought of the question and was like, okay, if, if there was any existing cast that you could like transplant into this movie. Okay. And so then I did the Ragnarok cast, basically. <laughs> okay, so uh, starting with Chris Hemsworth, he would totally not be Bob. He would be... Okay. <laughs> I was going to disagree with you, and then you were like, he's totally not Bob. Not Bob. Like, okay, we're good. He's, he's Zaroff. He's... Zaroff or Zaroff? Oh, Zaroff. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see that going there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought you were going to cast him as Martin doing the whole drunk Thor thing. No, Taika <laughs> Waititi is, is Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Tom Hiddleston is Eve and Tessa Thompson. <laughs> Stop laughing every time. <laughs> and then Tessa Thompson is Bob. <laughs> Oh my god! I didn't expect a gender bend, and wow. that was amazing. <laughs> wow. All right. Anyway, that was my so, casting. Good job. Serena, wow. do Total you want to go or you want me to go? You go. All right. We'll save the best for last, the birthday for last. Oh, All right, it, guys. it is not, but go ahead. So um, I, have, I, I have two people that should be combined into one person for Bob, and that is Rob Lowe, who is like now 56, and Ray Liotta, who is now 66. If you combine those two people... Listen, they're like the same person. <laughs> but, like, they are, but they're not. Like, they're actors. No, they, Ray is more career is gangster, different. and then yeah, Rob Lowe right. is more rom-com. Yep, yeah, you're right, right about Right, right, right. So, and I mean, you take those two them together, and it's adventure, and you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. right. Eve, our uh, damsel in distress is mm -hmm. uh, Molly Ringwald. So she's casting an 80s film with Rob okay. Lowe, totally fine. Molly Ringwald. Okay. Yeah. All we're right. going to go back in time. time well, that's how we're going to use time travel is to create these movies. Totally fine. Yeah. So Zaroff, um, I had Benicio Del Toro. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, Martin is Johnny Depp. <laughs> You I'm just want to cast Johnny Depp in everything. Yep, I do. This is going to be the new Serena thing. Is he's going he's gonna to be in somewhere. All right. My turn. Good job, Serena. <laughs> Quite Very a interesting, but good job. <laughs> so Zaroff can be no one except Mark Strong. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my classic God. Classic yeah. British bad guy. Yes, I mean, I know absolutely. Zaroff is Russian, but, like, he is that classic. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. Then... So there was a line that Zaroff had. Somebody said, like, oh, I'm going to be the hunt or something. And he goes, oh, no, outdoor chest, my mind against his. And I was like, chess. Okay. Anna Taylor-Joy is definitely Eve. Okay. So if we had her and we kept her red hair, Martin would be Rupert Grint. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. He could do that adorable, annoying, drunk brother Yep. to her smart. Like, Eve figured it all out. She was the one that was like, there's something going on here. He's got these dogs. There's, I mean, she was the damsel in distress. But before she got to that point, she like, pointed she to the hero. Yeah. She's like, I'm, here are all the things. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think they're about the same age. I was having issues with ages. But especially because of Bob, because I was like, oh, who's going to be her romantic partner? And I'm like, well, they didn't really have a romance. No. Like they were holding hands and she, he, was, he was definitely saving the damsel. But at no point were they kissing or like True. in love or anything like that. So I was like, all right, well, then if there was nothing in this, I'm going to go for the platonic like big brother father figure for this one because I in my head I I went older for Bob okay so I didn't want that awkward romance between Anna and whoever her co-lead was mm -hmm. so my thought process at first was Owen Wilson because of that oh, yeah. movie he did yes no escape right? 
no escape. Yeah. Yes. And then I started thinking, okay, funny people, but also scary. So like John Krasinski. Yep. 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 Which led me to oh God. the Colonel that I could not shake from my mind that Bob is Steve Zahn. Oh, yes. And Absolutely. I just. Yes. The Colonel in do, your head. He did like a horror lost in the jungle movie didn't he did he anyway that's who i now can only picture as bob is steve zahn a perfect getaway in 2009 two pairs of lovers on a hawaiian vacation discover that psychopaths are stalking and murdering tourists on the islands there we go that's, i haven't so, even that's seen the that. movie i already see that is a movie starring steve Wait, zahn. that's the, love it all right wait a minute you know, How has this movie influenced or been influenced by other movies? So here's my comment on this. I think that this is, so we have a million movies that we've reviewed that are based on stories or books or whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is the first time where things are influenced by the original short story, not by the movie made by the original short story. Yes. Yep. So it was hard to answer this question because I really think that it was the original content that things are based on. Yes. Of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's true. That actually makes sense. But that said, there are a million of, ad of adaptations of yes. this and it's such a, such a known concept at this point that like everyone can identify it. I think the, the thing that this had going for it was that it was the first adaptation. Right. Right. Absolutely. That said, I want to bring up two specific things. One, something that's not directly an adaptation, but still is a perfect example of how this trope has bled into our modern films is The Purge. I feel like The Purge oh, is like yeah. maybe yep. the next step in this, in this story yep. idea. Um, and then going the opposite way, obviously we're gonna, we were talking about The Hunt already. I, the it's funny because the hunt is i think it's designated as like a satire almost yep. and it, it's just it, again it takes it to the next step anyway um well we could go even a different way what was that movie that they they captured a girl and they like sacrificed goats and the bad guy was the curse on the family the game night oh yeah yes um so it yep. was no no it wasn't game night it was ready or not that's what it was called and granted, the, the, the premise was a little I bit different, that. but it, it was basically, not basically, but part of it was hunting another person, but it had that horror aspect where like it was demons and like a cultish type thing making them do it compared to it being, you know, rich people. Well, it was rich people doing, but. That goes to what I was just saying about The Purge, which is we're, we're kind of taking the story, like we're, we're adding questions to that, to the story, yes. to the, the base morality of it yep. in good ways and in bad ways, because both in, in Ready or Not and The Purge, it's adding like qualifiers, like, well, it's okay to kill somebody because I have this excuse, but no, right. it's not in reality. You know, it's, right. it's interesting yeah. that, that it this is question has kind of developed oh. a little bit. Um, there's also a TV show called Wrecked. I highly recommend it. I think it was three seasons. It was a parody of different shows. And the first season, it was a parody of Lost. And in the third season, it was a parody of this. Mm, um, okay. It's very good. Did you have any, any um, influences? Because I have some interesting ones me? that I want to share. Yeah. Uh, I have stuff that it made me think of. Not necessarily. In, well, okay. Okay, so there's an episode of Dollhouse. So I think it was the... the the opening episode of the whole show also the dogs hunting them i got like this weird fox and the hound vibe the um, um an alternate title of the original short short story was the hounds of zaroff which i oh. secretly think is they were trying to like the, the the short story was trying to leech off of the hounds of baskerville just the hounds that. of zaroff like yeah. just it sounds that scary but anyway i think it was reminiscent of silent movies there was very little dialogue, and I think if they had wanted to make it in the silent film era, they could have very easily. There was, I think there was a good 20 minutes while they were running through the, the forest and him chasing them, where they had, very, they had maybe one or two lines, and it was all of them running in music. It was, yep. if they, as long as you had that music track like they did in um, the, gold, the Gold Rush, 
you, you felt, you knew what was going on. You felt it. You could very easily understand this whole film without dialogue. Um, well, that, I mean, that was one of the first thing I noticed was, and you guys see it in our group message. Like, I'm like, oh, here's the music telling me how to feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this was, I mean, it was 1932. So they were still coming off of silent and, and they were still trying to adapt to, yeah. to talkies. So that totally makes sense yeah. that they were yep. still thinking in that, in that manner. For some interesting influences that I would like to share which I think is just so appropriate for my birthday, is that the Zodiac Killer... <laughs> oh, I wish. Uh, the Zodiac Killer, in real life, in his codes to the police, quoted that man is the most dangerous animal to kill. And oh. so, like, he has this concept of hunting people. And then, in turn, the 2000 film Zodiac, Jake Gyllenhaal references this movie. Interesting. So okay. in real life, the Zodiac Killer, like the real Zodiac Killer was, was referencing it. And then Jake Gyllenhaal, or the, the movie in 2007, referenced the movie specifically. That's fine. <laughs> Ladies, please remove your hats and silence your cell phones. How does this film hold up? I have, it doesn't, but it does. <laughs> That's what I did. Same here. Pretty much ex almost exactly. Beth, do you want to go first? <laughs> I think it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It, it's, a mo it's, it's a moment in time, so it's very indicative of 1932, but the concept is very, very, yeah. like, still completely poignant it, and it, relevant. Yeah, it, it definitely does. Yeah, 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 and so it's not, so the concept is there. It was just that, like, you know, I mean, from, from it's a 1932 film, so, like, you right. know, the, right. the, the effects are, you know, the effects and um, the dialogue was very stilted and yeah. Um, you know, she was screaming damsel, like those types of things. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really yep. hold up, but True. The, screaming the bloody concept, murder. Oh my God. Absolutely. I mean, she's famous um, for her scream. She, she got famous for her scream. So, you know, yeah. can't blame Is her. Is that mother. really? Yeah. Okay. Well, cause she's well, the I mean, damsel in King Kong. Blood, like blood is, curdling. Like blood curdling. I've never seen King Kong. I've seen clips and I've seen the poster. And as soon as I saw her face, I was like, yeah, she's known as the damsel. Like that's, yeah, that's who yeah. she is. Yeah, I completely agree, Beth, with you. The concept holds up. I have it in my notes here that it holds up more so than it doesn't. All right. Boom, we fixed it. Anybody got a fix? This was one yeah. of those where I, I literally wrote NA because, again, it's been redone so many times. I haven't seen all the remakes. I haven't seen all the adaptations. I'm sure somewhere they've already fixed any problems that there might be with this movie. <laughs> yeah, true, true. And Good point. again, I feel like the conversation has progressed for modern movies. So it's, yeah, for, right. you know. So I've said already everything I want to say yeah. about it. The only, I, I wouldn't use this as a fix because like I said, I think you are spot on. It is what it was. I thought it was good. It had a good ending. If we wanted to give it a twist is, I actually watched this twice because it was a short movie. It was only an hour and two minutes. It was, so yeah, yeah. So I yeah. watched it. I just had it on in the background to make sure because I wanted to make sure. I was like, did I miss a romance in there somewhere? Was there like a, a scene that I missed? Um, but I didn't see it on the second, no, you know, no, anyway, yeah. there was a point where I was actually, time. right, no, they right, exactly. didn't have uh, time. They were busy, which I appreciated <laughs> because I think one of my number one issues is I don't believe that they met each other two seconds ago. Why are they already in love and planning, you know, forever? Mm -hmm. So I, I yeah. definitely appreciated all that. The, the only thing there was dialogue after Zaroff thought he had killed Bob and had Eve fetched or something like that. But she said something to him and I missed what she said. But in the back of my head, I was like, this is the part where if there was the twist, he would have said, good job, honey, we did it. Where like, oh, she yeah. was in on it the whole time. Mm. So I was like, okay, if I was going to like somehow add a, like a, a twist in here, that would be my twist is like, okay. she was in on, she was like, she was being hunted without being hunted. And that was part of their like love tryst. You know, it's funny you say that because there was a moment when Zara f first initially captures Bob and they're down in his trophy room mm -hmm. um, and he's, he offers Bob, he offers to Bob to join the hunt on his side, not on yeah. the, the hunted side. Oh and yeah, I'm I forgot like, about that. I'm like, why is he not saying yes? You say yes. And then- At the gun he, and then right, kill him. Like, yeah. duh. <laughs> and I was like- Exactly my thought. Happening? So it was, I, I it was forgot like about little, that, yeah. Little twists like that throughout the movie. You could totally yeah. throw those in and kind of make it, yeah. you know, 
a, a, a next level. Yeah. All right. Oh, wait, I didn't do my boom. Oh, I'm sorry. Serena, do you have a fix? <laughs> uh, my fix is just that the dog seems to be different or non-existent because they were stressing yeah. me out and it made me um, like what I was like watching the movie like different with a different focus. Like I was concerned for the dogs, like when they were yeah. wrestling him by the waterfall and like climbing up the little mountain. At the All waterfall. I can say is about because I, I too was worried about the dog. So I always try to like look like I pay extra attention. I don't know why I pay extra attention because I feel like it would make me sad. But I did pay attention to the waterfall fight because he had two dogs attack him, I think, or two yeah. different. Yeah. And you can t you could tell that he had a treat <laughs> yes. in his hand. Yes. Because the dog kept like licking or whatever yeah. was in his hand. The dog was like, I want whatever this treat is. I want whatever this treat is. <laughs> So, well, okay. so like, because I have this, I have a meant so great Danes are very derpy to me. <laughs> They're not they, like, <laughs> you know, scary dogs. So, I mean, you know, no dogs are, are scary dogs, but you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so like watching it, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, I, I, uh, I didn't, you know, and they, I could, and I you could tell, like, they were, it was like play wrestling almost. Yes. Like, you could tell he was not being harsh to the dogs. Yes. Was, yeah. There was a note somewhere and I could get this a little bit wrong where you're right. Uh, Great Danes are not like, they're not Dobermans. They're not mm -hmm. that right. scary, whatever in their like disposition mm -hmm. is not a scary dog. So somebody owned all of these dogs yeah. and they were like, Oh, and somebody was like, yes, yeah, a big dog. And then they got the set and the guy was like, Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> to a point where they were all like light colored where they yeah. had to like, they changed the, the filming of it to make them look scarier because they weren't scary. Yeah. So they, they had, you know, their own. Yeah, I read somewhere that they like changed the camera angles to make them look more menacing and like all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. 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 So it, it, yeah, it could have been way worse. I think I, what I was waiting for was like something bad to happen to the dogs. And then like, yeah. you're right. It didn't really like nothing really. I feel like if I had gotten like before going in, if I, if somebody had been like the dogs, you're fine. Like they'll be fine. Don't right. worry about it. Right. Then I would have been yeah. able to yeah. just like. All I can say is like, in movie dogs, they got their comeuppance because I think it's assumed that he was eaten by his dog. He so. totally was, yep. All right. Note roundup. So anybody have anything else to say? say I have it. another quote by Martin. We are victims of circumstance. Um, and if anyone has a right to his liquor, it's a victim of circumstance. And I was like, hmm, Martin definitely had a drinking problem. There was yeah. no there question was, about there that. There was minor commentary on prohibition. I was going to say, cause that, was, that was my next, that was one of my notes I was going to mention is prohibition was what to 33 and this was you know 32 yeah so he was supposed to be the idiot he was supposed to be annoying um and he Martin playing a drunk was just it was great he was good there was he a was moment, so funny there was he a moment it. where like every time you shot to him he was like in a slump more slumped down position like more, <laughs> yeah. more, and, more and more I noticed I like, that oh, that's actually him. Really and then finally when he was all the way laying down on the couch was yeah. just like and he had like his drink I think it was like like on his chest like <laughs> it was, was great all right martini shot clink <laughs> would you recommend this movie who wants to go first I'll go first. I, I say yes. I think it's an hour long. I think it's a quintessential like early 30s movie. I, I think it has its place in history because of King Kong and the sets and the feel of a movie and it kept my attention. All right. That's what I said. That's exactly like I mean in terms of I was engaged the entire time. So Serena you're a yes too? I'm a yes. Um, I mean the fact that it was an hour, not like it was like more appealing to me, but it was like an hour movie for me. Like I like that because I feel like it cut out, you know, the pacing problem that we talk about. True. You're all right. I, yeah. I didn't have any of the pacing problems. And I think that they could have stretched this out to be like, a, you know, an hour and a half or an hour and 45 film. And there would have been the romance in there. Scenes. Well, I was that right. moment where they, they, they hid in the cave and had like a bonding moment. That's the yeah, trick yeah. is like, if you add the other story elements that were acclimated to seeing, it would be an hour and a half, hour 45. But yeah, because yeah. it was just the concept, it was yeah. very quick. Yeah. Yeah, it was Which right to the point like. and it wasn't hard to follow at all. Like it wasn't yeah. like, you know how there's sometimes there's stories where you're like, oh, this is confusing and there's so many characters and I'm mixing them up. Had that shipwreck not killed off 90% of the beginning, you know, cast, there would have been some confusion, but I right. like so that. Right, so like, is that that guy or is that that guy? Exactly. Yeah, I didn't have any of that. So, I, I mean, in general, like, I couldn't believe, 
not not to say like I have an issue with like 30s films or black and white films but usually sometimes they're hard like, you, yeah you nor- normally you're like oh this is boring yawn I it wasn't like that at all this might have been out of all those older films that we've watched, like this is definitely the easiest. I, don't know, I, I feel like this is all building up for a no from Betsy, however. Here it comes. It's it's a no for me. Yeah. <laughs> now why? Everything. Um, this is why I, we do so well together. <laughs> I think that um it's I mean it's so quintessential. We've been talking about how this is the basis of so much, yeah. but the but again the short story is the basis for so much so i would yeah. recommend reading the short story yep. and then yeah. instead of of most dangerous game watch something like king kong to show such a quintessential 30s movie yeah king mm-hmm. kong is like the end all be all and you have a lot of the same scenes and or sim- similar scenes yep. and um Faye ray still in there it's still same production i don't know i i feel yeah, like there are other have, options over this one that's why and, and, have and i haven't there. seen those so. right and, and like you said i mean it's it's enjoyable and it held my attention definitely but yeah well yeah of course like so me and tracy say yes and betsy's like no or like betsy will say yes and i'll be like a no or a maybe it's you always rare. say yes serena it's very know, rare I'm, to get three yeses from us that's okay it's, ra- it's rare to get like a hard no from me that's true oh. too yeah yeah all right thank you for joining us if you like what you hear you can find more great episodes over on our website www.millennialsatthemoviehouse.com or wherever you find your podcasts curious about updates extras from our episodes or want to add your two cents about a reviewed movie we're also on twitter and instagram our handle for both is at the movie millies. Check us out and make sure to follow us. So until next time, we're millennials. And we'll see you at the movie house. Happy birthday! <laughs> Yay!